and welcome to the second episode of the Pack Homer Podcast, brought to you by Waters and Mathis CPAs. If you're looking to pack your pockets with tax savings, visit WMCPAs.com, WMCPAs.com. I'm Cal Parker, joined with my two best, by my two best buds, Adam and Wesley, and our special guest tonight, former Pac-9 standout, Andrew Stinson. Uh Andrew, thank you for joining us. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Like I said before, um, I think it's awesome you guys are doing this. You know, when you're playing, you don't you don't recognize everyone that's so into baseball, right? You just you go out to and you play your games, and you don't know anyone that's really a diehard baseball fan. So it's cool to get to uh, to know everyone, and I think it's awesome you guys are doing this. Andrew, before we jump into uh, 2024 team, I just wanted to see if you could give us a little bit of background info on you. Of course, I we know who you are. We know that you're our <laughs> single season grand slam leader uh yeah. i think that uh patrick bailey was coming at you hard before covid covid saved me right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know that might have been the only good thing coming out of covid for me um but no so i i came to nc state um product of new jersey um my first playing year was 2009 played through 2012 was on staff for the 13 team when we went to omaha um was director of ops. So I, I've been around it. And now, you know, to stay around it, I, I do some ESPN three stuff with them, some announcing. Um, so it's been good. It's obviously awesome to be around the team uh, where you played. It, it's special. And yeah, I know you guys were at the NIL event and you talked about that in your first episode. And, um, you know, coach talks about guys coming in and knowing absolutely nothing about the program. I knew nothing about NC State. Um, growing up in New Jersey, you got Seton Hall, Rutgers, and St. John's, right? Um, and that's all I had. So when I first got that call from NC State, it was like, I, who the heck are these guys? But it's in the ACC, best, you know, baseball out there on the East Coast. So I honestly just kind of came down for a visit with my mom, and it was right away. I got on campus, and I was like, yep, this is it, not going anywhere else. And she's like, well, let's take a look. You know, we could, we can kind of see what else is out there. But I, I literally, uh, I committed, I think I took a visit on, you know, Friday, Saturday. I, I got home Monday and I committed Monday night. So it was, a, it was a pretty at-home feeling for me. And, you know, I've been here ever since in the Carolinas. That's a pretty cool story. I, I've all, we were kind of discussing earlier, we were wondering how you got down here. That's a <laughs> long trek from New Jersey to – to Raleigh, North Carolina. So the 2024 team, I, I know all three of us are excited about it, but, you know, we're pack homers. Uh, yeah. So we, we might be a little bit more optimistic <laughs> than we should be. Uh, you're probably uh, closer to the program than we are. Um, just w what is your take on this 2024 roster? And uh, we'll we'll try not to jump in all over each other. We still haven't learned that yet. We're, we're newbies. No, but. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it is, I guess for it. you never know when to talk. You look at the guys on the screen, they're like, you're waiting for them to go. Um, but no, the 2024 team, it, it has a lot of promise, right? When you look at it on paper. Um, I think there was on some, you know, unfortunate news, I think, with Wilson not being able to go for at least part of the season. Um, you know, that came out last week, or I think it was. So, um, but a ton of older guys and, and coach always talks about it. And this is exactly how the teams were when I played. If you have a good mix of older guys that have been there, know what to do, know the grind of it, um, mixed with a good group of, you know, newcomers. Um, and then you now in the transfer portal, you have a bunch of older guys that have played in other big leagues and other big schools. So you mix that all together. You have a good mix of guys at least. And that, and that's, if you win the locker room, you have a successful year. Um, and I think that's kind of what they have this year. You obviously have Cozart coming back, Serrano, Fritton, um, Sam Highfield. You have guys that have performed well. Um, and now you have some newcomers mixed in with that. I, I think there is some promise um, that, you know, Pat Kamans could definitely be excited about going into the season. Adam, what do you think uh, about this year's roster? We'll we'll kind of go round robin here a little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I think it's uh you know just looking at it on paper. Obviously, we don't know a lot about the new guys. I think Andrew, what you the point you made about you know the portal just certainly changed things. Yeah. We talked to a lot of folks uh, there at the NIL event. You know, to kind of kick off the season a little bit. You know, that was the 
you know, there's a lot of excitement around those guys. You know, Pennington, mm-hmm. I think a lot of excitement around him. I heard Coach talking about him and how, you know, he just commanded a lot of leadership in the locker room and a lot of respect, you know, and just kind of came in and was himself. So, um, but it does seem like there's a lot of young guys too, you know, obviously that, that we don't know about that I think everyone oh, yeah. seems to be excited excited about. So I, I'm really excited about Serrano. Um, you know, I think, you know, seeing him there uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, he looks like he's bigger to me um, than I remembered him being as a freshman, you know, played I think close to 50 games last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just really feel like, you know, he's poised to, to uh, have a have a real explosive year. I mean, obviously, it's easy to be excited about about Frit and Cozart. Um, you know, really just excited to see the dynamic there and 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 really some of the pitching. You know, I think there's a lot of good young pitchers that are going to be in the rotation and and get a lot of playing time. But you know, it's funny because you always kind of have to work that out early in the season, right? And then <laughs> there's not there's not a lot of guys that pitch. You know, uh, no. through, over the course of the season. So. Um, but I'm, I would say I'm most excited about Serrano. These guys know he was my guy last year. I latched on to him early on. so uh, I don't want to say I, who my guy was. I'm not, it can't be said. <laughs> he, yeah. He's easy to latch on to. That's for sure. Yeah. Wesley? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about uh, Pennington. You know, like we said in the first episode, we watched that guy take, take BP, and he looked like he might be special. Uh one concern I have with Pennington would be, um, you know, the NIL event and set on other you know, podcasts several times he's referenced the Kansas City barbecue. Um, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I would I would have thought Coach Avent would have given him a little bigger heads up uh, that that's uh, that's precious territory coming uh <laughs> You know, to, you know, I know Raleigh's not eastern North Carolina, but certainly uh, 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 Duplin County has a big influence uh, in the port business uh, on North Carolina State University. So, so we definitely uh, want to invite uh, Garrett to to experience real, uh, real eastern North Carolina style barbecue. I'm not sure. Maybe he had Smithfield chicken and barbecue. You know, maybe, maybe that's what the problem is. But. <laughs> We definitely need to introduce introduce Garrett to some uh, some real Eastern North Carolina barbecue. So we're we're happy to do that if he if he wants to take us up on that invitation. But I'm excited about the uh, top of the lineup for sure. I mean, what I what I've seen with Butterworth, I, I would think uh, between him and Souls, that's who uh, who would be uh, you know looking at for the uh, top of the lineup. So excited about the speed there. Uh, you know, here where I'm at. Uh, the tops of high school, uh, Luke Nixon. I'm um, excited about what he might can bring to the table. Uh, I know in the conference that, you know, Topsu and New Hanover and Ashley and those guys are in South Brunswick. That's one of the best uh, high school conferences in North Carolina. And uh, he's one of the best players that uh, that we saw last year. So excited about him. Um, and I think, it, you know, back to what you guys were saying, you know, you got what I heard the number was 20, 20 new guys and 20 veterans. So how many mm-hmm. of those guys can, uh, can congeal and, you know, you know, how they come together is going to be exciting to see. And, um, you know, and, and luckily for us, and I know that we're, we're solely dedicated to baseball, but, you know, this weekend, finally, we can move away from the fiasco that we've been watching called basketball. <laughs> and one, one good thing is Carolina at least just lost. So, yeah, yeah. So again, it tonight. <laughs> tonight is great. Who did they lose to tonight? Well. Syracuse. Oh, good. Oh, wow. Wesley, like, first off, because I don't think Smithfield barbecue is that bad. And second of all, because we only got one sponsor, like, come on, man. Take hey, shots. We got, we got, trying, we got, trying to get another we'll one. Get, we'll, we'll get Elwood Garner and Wesley Dale <laughs> on a hog cooker. And if, 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 if Garrett, if Garrett will say and truly in his heart say that Kansas City style is better after that. We'll we'll get them a small NIO deal, you know, moving throughout the season. <laughs> I, I I do agree with you, Wesley. That is a legit concern. I forgot about that. Um, you, you would think the guy there was some little... booze. There was some booze at the celebration. I yeah, mean, you know, uh, you know, I Coach Avon should that. should have warned him a little better about uh, our, our loyalty to uh, Eastern Carolina barbecue. <laughs> yeah. So as far as you know, like some things I like, and then some then some concerns. You know, like the coach and me, you know, you talk about defense and pitching. And last year, I mean, 
we had to move Kalai over to shortstop. I think it's probably well documented some of the problems we had there fielding the ball. And then, uh, you know, we had Groover playing third. And, I mean, if we're all being honest here, I love the James Groover. I love Gino, but, I mean, he's a hitter. Um, so we had him over there mm -hmm. at third base. Uh, you know, you got to have his bat in the lineup every night. And, honestly, he was the best third baseman on our roster. Um, but even even the last two years at third base, you know, a couple years ago, we started off with the – I'm not even going to say the guy's name, the the guy down – I don't know. He went down to eat gumbo or something. But um, <laughs> we had him over there, you know, kind of wallering around at third base. And I think that this team's got a chance to be a lot better uh, defensively. I think Coach Avent has talked about, you know, up the, up the, I mean, Nixon at second base – He's young. I think down the road, if you're thinking he's a guy that can play shortstop one day, uh, he'll be fine at second base. But uh, we got an experienced guy at shortstop in Butterworth, and then Amac, the kid that we got in, uh, that we stole from the Pirates. Uh, I think he's known as a good defender, and I think that makes you a better baseball team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, I have a lot of concern, you know, with, with Willison's injury. Any time that you take a guy that's won a game in the College World Series and – He's on the IR. That's never a good thing. Um, but I'm also really excited last year, and and I, I kind of be interested in Andrew's take on this with Dom Fritton last year. I mean, that guy was just nails every night for four innings. Um, and I think that, you know, you look at him this year, and you're like, man, if we can get for seven or even, you know, six and a third, what he was giving us for four. And I, and I yeah. don't know. I haven't been around, you know, that in the locker room or, or – or down in the bullpen, for that matter, working at, at, at that level of ACC baseball, how hard it is for a freshman to come in and do that. I mean, Carlos Rodon, obviously, I think, Andrew, you play with him. He's obviously, obviously uh, yeah. an exception. But <laughs> yeah. I think last year, every time Dom Fritton came out of the game, we were like, why are we pulling him? But then, you know, also, I think, you know, I heard some concerns about, you know, his ability to go late in games and young and trying to work up to that. So I'd be interested to Andrew's take on that because, I mean, Dom Fritton's got just ridiculous stuff. He does, and he, you know he has a high spin rate, so he he likes to work up in the zone, which as a freshman is a little bit scary, right? Like you you always hear you don't want to miss up, so I think he really to see with that last year just because he has that high spin rate on his fastball, nothing overpowering, um, and I think you know with the younger guys, and you'll see this with you know the Sosas and the Nixons this year, if they get some confidence early on. It, you don't know what you don't know. And, you know, all they know is college or um, high school baseball, right? And they succeed at that every single level that they've gone through. So if you get in the lineup early on in the season um, as a freshman or even a, a young sophomore, you really start to get that confidence. You're like, oh, wait, I'm, I'm playing baseball and I know how to play baseball. And it's, it's nothing overpowering or scary. Or, um, so I think for him, he just got that confidence early. They moved him into that Sunday role, which is kind of a, you know, quote unquote, lesser stress role. Um, and if you're able to get that out of a Sunday guy, that's where you win baseball games, especially in the ACC. Um, if you can win Sundays, you're doing something right. And I, and I think that's where they succeed last year with him. And, you know, they obviously they moved around a little bit, but I really think it was those first two weekends got him into that successful confidence of saying, hey, I can pitch at this level. Obviously, you're competing in the fall, early spring against your own teammates, but it's different when, you know, you have another, you know, color on the other sideline. Um, so I, I think it's for younger guys, it's what you don't know is what you don't know. You, you go out there and you just compete and all of a sudden you have success, you know, one, two, three times and all of a sudden you're, you're rolling into ACC play. It comes quick, ACC play. So if you can get that confidence up against, you know, your VCUs or, you know, Hawaii or whoever it may be this year, then you roll right into ACC play and it becomes a little bit easier. Yeah, I thought that, you know, last year, um, like you, you said, I, I will be interested too with Dom to see what he, you know, develops all speed-wise because, yeah. like you said, he went out there a lot of times and threw 20 fastballs in, in a row at the belt and said, mm -hmm. you know, hit it. And I understand that. Con <laughs> yeah, I understand that concern, especially after you've seen him one time. Um, yeah. I, I'm interested. I'm excited about seeing Ryan Marone. I know, um, you know, there's a lot of hype about him. He was a top, yeah. whatever, top hundred um, lefty coming out of high school. And I know I heard Coach speak about him on on a podcast recently. And he, you know, he, I think he actually made the comment that he would be competing for a starting job. So 
um, that's exciting to have, you know, have that kind of freshman coming in too. So sounds, sounds promising. Yeah, I, would, I, I know you do can... a disservice, sorry, to talk about Van Dam too. You know, it's like, he's a guy from my hometown. Um, oh, really? Nice. To, yeah, yeah. So I would be doing a disservice to him if I didn't mention him on this podcast. Um, but no, he's a guy that can't, kind of came out of nowhere. Football player, went up to uh, sunny Cortland. And, you know, he's like 94, 97 now. And it's like tall, lanky. Uh, whippy arm, really good. So, and that's another guy that they they love, and he came out of nowhere. So it's good for him. And but like Coach always says, you don't know until the lights come on, right? Like you don't know what that's you're exactly going to get. Right. So that's that's a big thing this year. Yeah, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, and you can take some of this stuff with a grain of salt. But like if you look at D1 baseball, and they have Logan Whitaker on the back end, and you know he's mm-hmm. he feels like he's like a household name. He's been with us. For so long and, and won a lot of big ball games. Tough guy. Um, I since was wondering, 20, since 2018. Andrew, with, yeah, yeah twenty eighteen for six years. Yeah, I was wondering, Andrew, with your knowledge with the team and working with the team. So, suppose that guy, you know, Whitaker is a guy who's on the on the back end, and are you planning you're going to try to put him on the back end? I know practice wise, you have to train to be a a bullpen guy. You can't, you know, that he's going out and his bullpen looks very different than the guy that's going to go throw a hundred pitches on Friday night. So now with Willitson's injury, if you, you wanted to bring Whit back to the rotation, like how, how long does that process take? I know, you know, that news is pretty fresh. I think it, it happened a couple of weeks ago, but how, what does that yeah. process look like? I don't, that's a good question. I try to stay away from pitchers when I was in college. Um, <laughs> they're the, uh, I try to stay with my athletic uh, position guys, but um, <laughs> no, it, it definitely takes some time. And you can, you saw last year with uh, Fritton, right? It's, you know, you kind of set limits every single bullpen, every single outing, um, whether it be 45 pitches. You know, you have to think about if you're a closer, how many pitches are you actually going to throw? Um, is it 30? Is it 45? Is it 20? Um, so I think that's where you start. And you kind of just gradually inch your way up. But I would say it's a, a solid month or so to, to get him into that role if, they, if that's the move that they were going to do. I think they have enough young arms that don't have to go that way. I think you keep in the back end. Um, and, you know, you got, you got Schaffner. Um, I think you have plenty of arms that you can throw into that Sunday role, you know, assuming that you're going to go – um, Frit and Friday night this year. You know, coach likes to mix things up too. Carlos didn't throw for Friday nights for us. He threw Saturdays. So, you know, it's always just kind of who falls into what role. And, you know, coach always loves the fact that he doesn't use Friday night guy. Um, that's always been something that he, he's like, oh, you know, you got to win a baseball game. I don't care if it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, but yeah, Carlos threw Saturdays for us um, when he was a freshman. And, you know, it's something that you may see this year that Fritton might just have to be the Saturday guy this year. And he's not the Friday night guy. It, it, who knows? That's a good point. Well, what, I, I'll, I'll let you go first. Go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'll say that's a good point. I forgot about uh, Carlos doing that. I think uh, his sophomore year he was – he, he yeah. moved to Friday night, but yeah, you're right. He did pitch. Saturday yeah, I think sophomore year he moved into Friday night. Yep. Well, I, I just wanted to ask the group, and I'll, I'll let Wesley go first. I, I guess we kind of know what we have on what we. I say we know what we have on paper, but we have an idea what we have on paper. Um, so you know we're preseason top fifteen D one baseball. I think number thirteen in their poll. They're a pretty reputable source. Um, they have us hosting a regional in their preseason projections. Um, so I'll, I'll ask the group and, and start with Wesley. What what do you think makes us go from, you know, a top 25 team? What do you think we're going to have to do to, to get to Omaha? What What is going to be the area that we're really uh, going to have to maybe outperform what we're projected? Well, I mean, I, I think we know there's going to be offense in the long run. So, <laughs> I think pretty much every year, you know, where it's pitching, at, uh, we close ball games. Um, if you look at the the schedule, it's just a gauntlet. Um, I mean, even VCU, they were down last year, but historically, it's a good baseball program. Um, so, I mean, for me, it would be the unknown of pitching, like you said, you know, with Willison being out for, you know, what I'll assume is the year. 
um, you know, who steps up, which is a great opportunity if you're a freshman, 18 years old on NC State's, you know, campus when, when Avent says in the locker room, who's going to be the guy, you know, I'm sure there's, there's 10 guys or maybe 12 guys, whatever, you know, I, I wasn't a pitcher, but they're saying, wow, I could be that guy now. So I'm, I'm sure their, their focus is totally changed, uh, seeing a leader in the locker room, you know, not being able to play. And then, and then, you know, maybe that's something the guys rally behind, you know, a guy that's a, a senior, you know, having the whole season taken away from him before he gets started. Maybe that's something that, that's, that starts the, uh, you know, the bond of those 20 new guys and the 20, the 20 old guys. And maybe that's what creates something special. And, you know, and, you know, that we'll see, you know, I mean, I think, I think if we can make it, if we can make it into the tournament, you know, based on the conference schedule, then we got a pretty daggone good baseball team. Adam. I, I would say, you know, with all the preseason hype and accolades for Cozart and Dom. I think if that play, you know, if that, if that plays out to be true, you know, if they live up to the hype, so to speak, um, and, 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 and are playing at that kind of level, which they are projected to play at, which we all think, uh, you know, obviously think and know that they're capable of, um, I think we'll be setting in a good position. Uh, I just think that, Cozart is going to be his third year as a starter. Um, you know, just such a, I, I just feels like, you know, really poised to be a great leader for this team this year. Um, and, you know, you got a guy like Alex Sosa. We didn't, we didn't mention him, but, uh, you know, a guy, a kid that we didn't know if we were going to get to Raleigh or not and, and, you know, can play behind him. But I, I feel like if those guys, you know, our top guys really live up to the billing this year, then uh, we'll be in a good position. And also the experience that we've added as far, you know, to, to be a better fielding team, I think to be like back on our normal kind of expectation, right. Um, uh, of, 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 of playing defense, I think, you know, and not, not giving up runs there. And I, and I really like our chances with that, with some of these guys in the portal that we've added, right. And getting guys back to more, maybe more of their true positions. So I think if that happens, we're going to be, We'll be in a position to make a good run. Andrew? I, I, agree with that. I really do think defense, uh, they lost some games last year due to defense. Um, you know, I think they feel that probably like a 975 clip uh, the year before was even worse. I think they were at yeah. like a 962, 963 clip. So um, defense is something you got to take pride in. And and if you don't, you, you obviously see it right away. Um, you just can't squeak by baseball games in this league or even on, you know, any type of, you know, scheduling. But um, you can't squeak by if you're making errors or walk in people. It just doesn't work at this level. So I think if they can hone in on the defense side of things, um, and that can really just – if you play good defense, you're going to win, you know, five, ten games just off of good defense. So then when you put everything else together, you know, it all kind of adds up. Um, but, yeah, I think if, if that happens, there's a chance that – once again, they can, you know, obviously be special. They got to stay healthy. They, you know, have some injuries in the last couple of years that, you know, have kind of hurt them throughout the season. You're going to have your peaks and valleys, right? It's a long season, 56 games. But I, I think if they do kind of hone in on that defensive side of things and, and keep walks to a, a limited pace, um, they, they do have a chance to do something, you know, pretty cool. Yeah, just talking about the defense some more because, I, I mean, I just – agree with that wholeheartedly it's a big part. i think i That's think last year part. i don't know if you guys remember we were playing in greenville and uh and there's a lot of defense you know you talk about the field percentage i was, I was there <laughs> unfortunately but <laughs> a lot of the defensive stuff of our struggles the last couple of years don't even show up on paper i don't know if you guys That's remember the ball right yeah the little fly ball hit between left field and shortstop and it hits the ground and they scored a hit and it's like hey, but in, in, in ecu's uh, you know, back in ECU a little bit, those fans were, and I can't remember the kid 15's name off the top of my head. They were in his head, and he allowed it. It was um, I mean, I, just watching that game, I told my buddies, ECU grads, that, you know, he, he's in a bad place right now. And sure enough, uh, dropped, dropped the ball. But four runs came in that day, four or five runs. <laughs> it ain't easy playing out there, I can tell you that. It's no, not you easy. Got, 
you get so many balls that you know you feel like you should get to or you should make a play that don't even show up in the step you know in the in the book yeah. i think there's been a lot of that the last couple of years i do um you know, I'm excited to see Serrano play center field, but, you know, quite honestly, I thought the last couple of years we've got some guys in center field that could run it down. You know, Nolan, yeah. I think, was a transfer from Davidson, but, man, he ran like a deer. So, you know, it will be interesting to see if Serrano is the kind of center fielder that is a, a an above-average center fielder who brings you a lot at the plate, or is he going to take some runs away too? Because I think that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, I, you know, I'd say if we could get Sam Highfield – back to anywhere close to the Sam Highfield that got the keys to Apex, um, you know, that would that go a long way. Um, you know, I know he's he's gutted it out and battled some injuries and, you know, stuck through it and, and stuck with us. But um, really, I think for us to go where we want to go, um, you know, we, obviously we need Fritten to be as good as we think he can be. But also, you know, it's going to take a couple more guys and, you know, Highfield's kind of, uh, one of those guys we're counting on. And if we, you know, if you get the pre-injury Sam Highfield, um, you know, that really, really makes me feel a, a lot better about uh, yeah. the potential of this team, not, you know, just getting to a regional and burning out. And then, and then the bullpen, um, you know, I think mm -hmm. uh, you every year, and Adam's laughed at me before, I think I made a huge diagram one time. He's got a, he's got a picture <laughs> of it on his phone, but when we were playing in Arkansas, Pack One of the things, pig. pack versus pigs, <laughs> we beat the pigs. But anyway, uh, I you look at the teams that are around in June, like they're usually got like a dozen guys that threw 10 plus mm -hmm. innings. And the last couple of years, I mean, hell, when we were in, in Columbia last year and, and I follow the pack regularly, we were running out guys I'd never heard of. I was like, yeah. Where where have these guys been all year? Because we were so limited out of the bullpen. It was pretty much last year, you know, we had Baker Nelson, uh, and then, you know, Dom was in there a while, and then we had Rio Britton. But it was the same guys every single night. And if they didn't have it, uh, you know, there was nobody else to go through. It was like, buddy, we're going to have to get you to gut through the seventh for us because we really don't have anybody behind you. So I would, you know, you hear about all these young arms we have. If we could get two or three of those freshmen, or transfers that are that are coming in like Van Dam that can really just go in and give us some good innings. You know, we need some guys that are going to give us. They don't got to throw eighty innings for us this year, but if we could get a few guys that could could go out and give you, you know, twenty five, thirty five innings, that makes a big difference at the end of the year. You know, you get or even in the midweek games. You know, last year, I mean, my God, you go to a midweek game and you're like, oh my God, I guess we don't have him this weekend because we're you know <laughs> running out yeah. so and so tonight to try to beat ECU. Like, who the hell are we going to throw against Clemson? Or, you know, every week. Sure. So, so I really think, you know, if our bullpen can can be better, every bullpen ain't going to be like the one we took to the College World Series in 2021 where you get through five and you just hand it to Villeman and Justice and it's over. Um, you yeah. know, we I think there is we, – we need to be we a little better a couple, we, we need a couple in the bullpen. We need a couple of those young arms to click. You know, a couple of these guys that we, that everybody feels good about. We just need a couple of them to click, and I think it'll be a lot different scenario for us for sure. All right, hey. I'm gonna I'm gonna transition this into this schedule. I don't, Andrew. How much longer do we have you? I know you have an obligation, but you got a couple more minutes. Yeah, we're good. I don't. I know nothing hey. about the schedule, but let's roll. Hey, Cal, Cal, Cal. Let me ask Andrew one question really quick before. Okay, we you do that. <laughs> So, 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 Andrew, with uh, you know, we need to uh, mention the Avent's two wins away from one thousand. Yeah. Uh, you know, a fun fact: Avent, I believe his degree came from VCU. So, you know, we actually, you know, he could achieve that against where he he got his degree. So, my my nephew is pretty pretty decent high school baseball player. Loves NC State and grew up, you know, going to to games there. Uh, as he got older, uh, he's a junior now, but. Uh, two years ago, he started doing some circuits to other, you know, universities and uh, yeah. one just, uh, you know, Chapel Hill and Greenville and some others. And, you know, he called me and he's like, hey, Uncle Wesley, why is NC State's facility so bad? <laughs> I'm like, well, hey, man, that's, you know, that's, that's a great question, you know. That's a so, fantastic I mean, question. You know, and, you know, the point of the question, I mean, the point of this is, Andrew, you know, with the limited resources that coaches have, 
how is he the most successful coach NC State's had since Falvano? Like how, how has he how has he kept up in recruiting? How has he kept that pace with the other state schools with limited resources? Yeah, um, and one, it, it's the first part of this. It's ridiculous that we don't have nicer facilities. Um, I'll say they're that coming. Right they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. I've been got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to build and be behind everyone else in five years. Yeah. Um, but no, it's true. And, you know, when I came down from New Jersey, you know, I saw Seton Hall and I, you know, obviously was recruited by, you know, Michigan and St. John's and all these other schools. And yeah, they had great stuff. Um, but then when you think ACC, you're thinking, you know, the Carolinas and, and all this, and you get down here and you're like, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I thought it was great because I played on an all dirt infield, right? Like it's, Hey, this is the nicest surface I've ever played on, but yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it is, uh, it's ridiculous that a program with this much tradition and this much success over the last 40 years at one school doesn't have top notch things. Um, I will say that, but as far as coach Amen goes, he's real. Um, he's not going to sell you stuff. Um, you know, he's not going to sit there and tell you that you're going to come in and play right away. And, you know, you're going to do all these good things. And, um, you know, I can remember, I think it was probably week two of my freshman year. I had a great fall. I was hitting, um, I wasn't a highly recruited guy. So for me to get on the field, I knew it was going to take some, take a lot to be honest with you. And, um, we were sitting there in a circle at home played and, you know, I think we had some injuries or something was going on and, you know, we lost a, a game or two in the, in the first two weeks, which, you know, you shouldn't happen, you know, when you're NC State, right? Um, and I remember Coach sitting there, he's like, yeah, you know, Coach Har and Coach Ward at the time, they're telling me to put Simpson in the lineup and I just don't think he's ready. And I'm like, oh, shit, like, this is going to be a long season. I thought it was going to be long, but this is going to be longer. But, and that's just how he is. Like, he, he knows how to push the buttons of guys that, you know, that he wants in the lineup. And um, he's going to challenge you every day. It's not just on the field. It's in school. It's, you know, in the locker room. It's um, it's all over. So I really do think he just, he's just real with everyone on the, on the squad. Um, you know, and I think a lot of coaches these days will sugarcoat um, in terms of, hey, you know, whether it be NIL stuff or playing time just to get the kid there. And then all of a sudden, you know, you can see teams in the fall have 45, 50 players. And it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, you told me I was going to be one of one of five, right, or something along those lines. Um, and it's not just him. It's Coach Hart. It's Coach Chrysler. It's it's the whole staff that is honest with you. Um, hey, if you want to come here and have success, you put in the work and, and it's going to come to you. And I think that's where, you know, Coach Avent has really, you know, thrived in that honesty. and. Um, he come. He loves NC State, as you guys saw at that NIL um, banquet a couple of weeks ago. The man loves NC State, and if if anyone talks bad about NC State, he's going to be the first one to attack you. And um, I I think that kind of rubs off on the guys that will come in and have success. And you've seen that. And um, and I think I mean he's just a special special coach. And you know you saw the the twenty one team come back, and it was they were all there. They all love him. Um, and the guys that don't love them are the ones that don't work hard and don't go to class. Right. And, you know, the ones that are going to get the um, the bad side of them. And don't get me wrong, I've, I've seen the good and the bad. Um, but <laughs> but the, the good definitely outweighs the bad. Yeah, Andrew, what I was going to ask you, and please do stay as long as you'd like. But yeah, so, so you were you were in, at State four years, right? Is that correct? Four or five. Yeah, technically. I'll, I'll yeah. say five. I graduated in five, played four, yeah. Okay. So how did you guys not get a road trip to Hawaii? Dude, <laughs> I went to Myrtle Beach for four years in a row. <laughs> damn, damn dirty Myrtle for four years. <laughs> the crazy thing is, so literally four years in a row, we went to Myrtle Beach and I think 2013, they went to World Series. So I went to Super Regional my senior year. They went to World Series the next year. The year I left, or maybe two years after I left, they go to Hawaii. 
And I was like, Coach, <laughs> the hell is this? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, Hawaii, Myrtle Beach, it's, it's one and the same. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I, I wish I got to go somewhere, but no, uh, it was Myrtle Beach for us. Yeah, that's cool. It's a little yeah, different. That's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be a, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a great memories for a lot of those guys too. They'll, I know they have remember a blast out forever. there. It is, and it. And it's actually good too. And and coach loves road trips and, and he loves road trips for the fact that guys are together twenty four seven, right? Like you're sleeping in hotel rooms, yeah. you're on the flights and everything. He loves it. And I think for the, a team with this many younger guys or newer guys, it's gonna be really good to get on the road and, and play some games and, you know, stay in the hotels and, you know, kinda of learn more about each other. You it's easy in the fall to to like your teammates and um, cause you're not losing, right? Like you haven't lost a game. That's the hardest thing is when you kind of see yep. who, who reacts to what, when you lose. So that's one of the, um, the core things about getting on the road. So I'm not going to spend long on VCU. Um, like Wesley said, uh, that's who we got coming to the, to the duck this weekend. Um, if you look at our, I called it Twitter the other day. What Adam told me I have to call it X. But anyway, our Twitter page at Pack Homer Pod. If you uh, retweet us, we got four tickets uh, up for grabs uh, at the Doak. Um, VCU obviously a series that you hope you definitely win. You really hope you come out of that three and zero. I mean, they have been in regionals here recently, so they're not a doormat of a program. It will be a good early test before we go to Hawaii. Uh, what I really want to get into is just real quick talking about the ACC. Wake Forest, you know, hour and a half down the road, preseason number one in the country, absolutely loaded. And then if you go down the, the preseason polls, you have Clemson at number nine, you have Duke at number 12, uh, the blue team at the other blue team at 15, um, and then NC State, of course, at 13. The state of North Carolina has more ranked baseball teams uh, in the preseason poll than any state in the United States, which kind of speaks volumes to the quality uh, mm -hmm. of, of product that the high schools here are putting out as, as well as the programs here and, and the investments they're making. But uh, I'm sure Andrew can talk a lot about the gauntlet of playing in the ACC. And we talked about that a little bit last week, but uh, who like really sticks out to you, Andrew, in the ACC is, you're going to have to get through them. Uh, other, Wake Forest is obvious. I was going to say, it's, you... it's, it's obvious Wake Forest, right? Um, you know, there's a team that I think is going to be sneaky um, only because of how they played last year. And, you know, they made a ton of mistakes last year, but just knowing, you know, Link Jarrett down at Florida State, um, you know, obviously they're going to be playing with some heavy hearts, losing Coach Martin this year. But I, I think it's – they had a team that – I remember doing announcing the games and I was sitting there on Saturday and I was like, this team should not be where they're at. And they were talented. They were young. Um, they had arms. They could hit. Um, they were good. And, and Florida State's known, obviously, across the baseball world to be very good on the, you know any given year. But I, I think they're going to be good. Um, you know, you look at Carolina, you look at Duke, you look at Louisville, um, it's going back to kind of the old ACC of where every single team can beat you on any given night. And that's how baseball is anyway. It doesn't matter if you're playing, you know, a VCU or a, or a Clemson or whoever. Um, baseball is hard to begin with. So I, I think um, this is going to be tough. It's going to be a tough year. Um, I'm excited to watch it for sure. And, you know, I, I think if you can get – those maybe grab two or three wins out of those top couple teams, you're going to be sitting pretty. Um, you know, I, we went to, God, what was it? My sophomore year, went to ACC final. And I looked back and it was, we we were 15 and 15 in the ACC. And it was like, <laughs> if, you can, if you can get to even, it's like, hell, we had a great year. Um, you know, teams that, you know, the Florida States and Louisville's that have gone like, you know, 25 and two or whatever it is. Like, that's that's an exception to the to the every year kind of gauntlet that you said, um, but no, it's it's going to be tough. It it always is. Adam, yeah, 
<clears throat> Andrew kind of stole Florida State from me. You know, I was I shared that video with you guys. You know, that the Adams kid uh, pumping 101 and a 91 mile an hour changeup. Um, that's that's something you don't see every day at that level. I'm so glad I'm not hitting anymore. I would I would probably go with Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I can't imagine. Um, but I I do feel like I, I, I totally agree. Watching them last year, I, I really felt like they were you know just way underperforming for the to for the caliber of talent mm-hmm. they had. I was going to say one thing about I was thinking about it today. Um, when I was thirteen, I went to Mike Martin baseball camp, and uh, I remember it was uh, J D Drew's senior or his junior year. Or maybe a sophomore <laughs> year. It was his, it was his second year playing, and uh, during that baseball camp, there's two funny things. Um, obviously, great guy. Like I just remember his, um, you know his, you know the just the respect that he commanded. Right, um, talking to our group, yeah. he spent a lot of time with us over the course of the week. It was really really cool. But um, we were we were given a locker room tour at one point during the thing. And one of my buddies that came down from North Carolina with me, um, there was an Eastern reflex bat and, and JD Drew's locker, and, you know, Eastern reflex was the thing in the mid nineties. Right. And so, uh, my buddy reaches out to touch it. And one of the assistant coaches says, don't touch that bat. And, and we all just kind of froze, you know, he says, that thing will burn you. And, uh, that was, that was pretty cool. And, and the, the the other and, and and then the next year obviously he won the golden spikes and hit four fifty something. Um, but the other crazy thing about that weekend was it was me and two of my buddies flew down thirteen years old underage flying right and um, by ourselves and we flew we connected from Tallahassee through Atlanta and it was the morning yeah. after the the centennial bombing at the Olympics. And that place was nuts. So I, I remember going to Mike Martin Baseball. Uh, base, I think it was called Mike Martin Baseball School. And I was thinking about that, you know, this week with with a heavy heart, thinking about how special that was. It it made me kind of a I always been a Pack fan, but it 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 made me really it, it was a lasting impact. I always kind of pulled for for Florida State and baseball. So I do think that uh, Jarrett's gonna have them back really quick. So um, yeah, after a couple of diversions there from. From what we were talking about, I would say uh, I would say Florida State for me for sure. Uh, besides Wake, like like we mentioned before, Wesley. Yeah, I'll be short on this. You guys covered most, but I mean, essentially, you know, looking at the Atlantic, other than Notre Dame and BC, is you know just toss the ball in the air. Uh, all those teams are incredible, and to the point that we we've all said, if you can just make it into the postseason, you have a chance to be in. So that's that would be the goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I hate to say this, but I think Duke's going to be really good. Um, I think Chris Pollard's a good baseball coach too. A uh, really good baseball coach, and you look at what they've done. And I think the kid's name. I was trying to look it up, but I think it was Santucci. I think the the, mm-hmm. the starter they lost last year that was so good, and they got him back. And I don't know if you guys remember, but Duke like staffed like a lot of ball games last year. Like you know, we talk about you know, not having a bullpen. They threw Harry Holstaff every game. And I just remember watching a few Duke games last year where they would just bring 94 in after 94 after 96. And it was, you know, that's – they just got so many arms in the pen that I I think Duke, you know, is dangerous, Uh, obviously not in our division. Uh, Wake Forest obviously is getting all the love and, you know, all of what they do with analytics is – crazy now and they probably got some alien over there in the lab right now uh (laughs) learning how to throw with both hands but um i I do think duke probably i mean i think wake forest if you made me pick one i would probably pick wake i mean they have everything there to be be a really good club but uh i think duke uh is gonna have something to say about that i mean like wesley said our whole division every team you, you go down i think the projected order of finish is Wake, Clemson, NC State, Florida State, Louisville, and then, you know, Boston College and Notre Dame, um, which, you know, they, they won't they won't be a pushover. So you got to play yeah. those guys every weekend. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then on the other side, you know, you have, you know, you're, we're like, oh, boy, the Atlantic looks really good. And then you look at the Coastal in the, in the top four there. You have Duke, Virginia, 
UNC and Miami. So, um, well, you got so you many got UVA, many good teams. UVA, UVA is a top fifteen team as well, I think, aren't they? Yeah, UVA is yeah. top fifteen in the country. I think UNC is <laughs> UNC. Well, UNC is uh, right now they have uh, Duke twelve, State thirteen, Virginia fourteen, and UNC fifteen, and that's what Clemson at ten and and Wake Forest at one. So, um, they have eight teams. D one baseball has eight teams from the ACC projected to host a regional. I mean, that's absurd. That's that half the regionals. A, yeah, and we gotta go, and we go to Charlottesville. So, yeah, That'd buckle up. Buckle up. Anything else, guys? No, I'll give you one good Avon story and ties in with your flying into Atlanta to Tallahassee. So, we were, I think it was my junior, senior year, whatever it was, playing down in Tallahassee, probably senior year. So, coach, we were at Virginia Tech the weekend before. Coach gets tossed. He uh, he bumped the umpire, so he gets suspended for a game. So we're flying down to Tallahassee on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, like whatever, morning, mid-afternoon, we connect in Atlanta. So everyone's on the plane, and, you know, no coaches anywhere around. And, you know, everyone's boarding, it's boarding. Final call, no nowhere around. So we get all on the plane, and – um the lady's like, hey, do you guys have a Jack Avent with you? And we're like, <laughs> no, nah, close the door. Let's roll. <laughs> so we, le- we left him. We left him in Atlanta. Um, so he missed the flight, you know, in Atlanta. We went practice. We did everything. And he came back in the, and he was sitting in the, uh, the hotel lobby when we got back from practice. And it was just one of those things where it was like, finally, we get to say something to him, you know, missing a bus or missing a plane or whatever. <laughs> so we gave him shit all weekend for it. Um, luckily, we won two games and we got out of there in a better mood than what he came in. But, yeah, we left him in Atlanta. Can't miss a flight. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's too good. That's great. Yeah, that's good. Well, so. Andrew, I really, really, I think we all, I speak for all of us when I say I really appreciate yeah. you joining Thank us. You. We love the red and white. You obviously wore the red and white, and love it. Uh, I, I know you said your 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 podcasting career with everything you got going on in life right now might be a little bit on hold, but you're more than welcome <laughs> to to join us anytime. Yeah, let me know. This was awesome. Uh, like I said, I, I think it's awesome you guys are doing this. Um, I'm sure I'll see you out some game. So I think it's great, and I uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right, to BCU this weekend. Looking forward to it. See you guys soon.